think, well, I'm a geneticist by trade, and what I'm interested in actually studying is uh, is obesity. And you might think, well, why am I studying genetics of obesity? People just eat too much, and people do eat too much. That's what makes them obese. Therefore, the only way to not become obese is to eat less and to move more. Um, but the reasons why people eat more are powerfully biologically and powerfully genetically determined. And so my research group is interested in understanding the genetic control of food intake and the genetic control of body weight. And we now know that it involves the brain. We're beginning to understand more about the pathways controlling food intake and controlling body weight. But really, there are two basic questions which we still need the, 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 the answers for. And I think we still don't know. The first is, I think as I said, why do some people eat more than others? It seems a simple question, but it actually isn't and we don't know a lot about, about that. The second question is, when someone gets fat, why do some people get ill and why do some people not get ill? And so, you know, the people are saying, well, there are some fat people that are actually relatively healthy and that's true. So I think those are probably the two major big questions to ask, but interweaved amongst those two big questions and therefore what can we then do about trying to treat obesity the obese people um, 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 now because asking them to eat less and move more clearly has not been working so I don't know if that answers your question but 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 that that is where we're at at the moment the field receives a lot of industry funding I think we um, can't complain too much about the level of funding I think the field as a whole involves and industry is interested because it is interested in trying to solve a problem which influences now um, more people in the world than there are starving people okay so you know more if there are more fat people in the world than there are people starving and industry is interested in trying to make money from this okay for to be to be frank um, on top of the, the obesity are all the various comorbidities, sort of the, the stuff that actually kills you. Because obesity in of itself doesn't kill you, it's everything else. Cardiovascular disease, type 2 diabetes, certain types of cancers. And clearly, if you can find a way of solving the obesity problem, you then cut down the risk for everything else. And so there is a lot of industry interest um, in funding research primary, uh, as well as trials um, within the field. In the past, I think people always thought that industry was the dark side, you know, with the new Star Wars coming out, the dark side. But I think that's kind of foolish because at the end of the day, we need pharmaceutical industries out there because they're the ones that make us the drugs, okay? and we, whatever drugs, whatever drugs they make. So I think increasingly now, there's a lot of push from the universities, there's a lot of push from um, institutes that you're actually studying. There's a lot of push from the MRC, which funds which funds the, the research that I do for translational research. And the only way to perform translational research is to actually get industry backing, um, because they can actually bring um, up the amount of money. So we're in a situation now where we're encouraged to interact with industry. Then the trickiness about publications that depends on a case-to-case -case basis, and I think quite often now. Um, industry do not stop you from publishing unless it's some really hot piece of, um, you know, drug that is uh, some uh, blockbuster drug, which I have not been involved with. I think more typically it's more primary or basic research and industry typically only wants a month lead time just to look at the stuff before you're allowed to publish. So in my experience working with industry, they have not stopped you from publishing. They may slow you down for a few weeks, but that's really about it. It's not just a trend to publish in open access journals. All the, pu all the um, funding bodies that we have require us to publish. If not in open access journals, then at least to, pro to, to provide uh, complete open access to the publications. So for example, the university will now pretty much pay all your open access charges for, for publication of everything. And you just, if you get something published, so it doesn't matter if you publish it in an open access journal, that still costs money, or in a journal that in of itself is not open access, but the university will pay it to make that article open access. It's now a requirement, otherwise we, we can't get future funding. My strategy is twofold. Uh, don't piss people off 
and always be useful. And that, and, and I have kept those two mantras. So, so I've kept. Obviously, I've done my science, and I'm interested in, in, in doing the science. And I try to be as successful as I can there. And it's debatable how successful one is. But actually, my security and my job security comes from having um, generally not um, put anyone's nose out of joint in any severe fashion. Um, but actually being useful and being useful in the sense of finding myself a technical niche which I actually know a lot about and I can actually help people about and I actually set up a core facility so part of my life is actually running this this core facility so at the end of the day because I was useful because I had a technical expertise that was difficult to replace that is what ensured my job security The problems with, with, with that have to do with timing. And I think undoubtedly, um, I think I have found interesting things. Um, I think some of the interesting things which I found have not gone in as high a profile of journal as I would have personally liked. And it all had to do with timing. Okay, either a competitor, less so on, on, on a competitor, but in a situation where um, it just was not the right time to produce that data. We did not have the time to wait to get something published, so we had to publish in a um, lesser journal, for lack, of a, for lack of a better term, so that we can actually get the stuff out. So I think there's always a little bit an element of luck when it comes to something like publishing, and I think timing is, 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 the, biggest, is the biggest thing. Some of the work in which I've tried to publish has been done at the bad, at a bad time, and not the optimum time um, for it to be published. Once again, there's always an element of luck. Clearly, if you've discovered something huge, then that improves your your, your chances. The main problem now is most of the journals, the glamour journals, nature, cell, science, require so much work that the best way of actually getting it really accepted is to collaborate widely so rather than trying to do you know the entire following everything from a molecule or a patient all the way up to you know a mouse and trying to work out mechanism i think the quickest way the easiest way to do it is through collaborations in other words you know find someone who does the animal find someone who does the human find someone who does the, the, the molecular stuff and try and get a complete story in order to get it done. So these are what the glamour journals, the glamour journals want. But if you have a story that is less typical, uh, more typical, which means that you have found a mechanism for something, you have identified something else, then I think it's being, it's trying to tell the best story you can tell and being realistic about where you aim to actually get it uh, published. I think that's the biggest thing. You have to know, I think, in you, um, what the market value of, of, of that piece of, of that paper is. Be honest with yourself. And I, I think it underlies um, all of what we do. If we do the most wonderful work but we can't communicate it to other scientists, for example, what is the use of doing the work? Where do you where how do you get across? And science communication, you know, spans the field from writing to speaking um, to any number of different things. So that's science communication to your peers. But public science communication is also equally important because the people that read your papers or go to your talks will form what 0.001% of the population, or maybe even 0.0001% of the population. The other 99.99% pay your salary. So I think we are beholden um, to provide the public, in terms of public science communication, um, to let them know what their tax dollars, tax pounds are paying for. I think you've got to know your audience. Okay? And so that's the, that's the first thing, because the biggest thing and the, from what from what I've seen, the biggest issue with lay people understanding science is not that there's not enough science out there. There's a lot of science out there, but it's that the scientists don't put it in an appropriate fashion for lay people to understand. And what I don't mean is to dumb it down. Okay, people do not like dumbed down science. Um, 
they want it to be simplified, they want it to be put in the terms that you actually understand it. But the critical thing is to simplify a message does not equal to provide a dumb message or wrong message. So I think that is probably the biggest lesson that I've learned when, when, when providing it. People don't want to be spoken to like they're stupid. But you need to understand their background, you need to understand where they're coming from to simplify the message in, in, in order to do that. I think that's probably the biggest lesson that I've, that I've learned. But we need to, we need to do this to, to the um, to the lay public, either in writing, through TV, through radio, through any number of other means. Being media savvy helps in terms of um, promoting your science, undoubtedly. Okay, so in other words, making sure that if you found something interesting, or if you're going to try and get it published, um, promoting it is very, is very, very useful. So in other words, it's actually out there. Does it influence it's getting published? I don't think so yet, you know, so at the moment, because typically you wouldn't publicize a piece of work until it's close to or it has been published. So it's very useful to publicize it after so that people know you, people know your work. It may or may not have an indirect effect later when you submit another paper, but that piece of work that is being publicized is unlikely to be influenced by the actual media surrounding it. I, th I, think, I think that if you are a high-profile scientist, then you always have a scenario look because, because peer review when it comes to publication is not anonymous. Well, no, sorry, the reviewer is anonymous, but the author is not anonymous. So clearly someone with a higher profile name, when a peer reviewer looks and says, oh, why do that person? We're human beings. I think uh, subconsciously it does influence your decision when you actually come to that. In this time of financial austerity, okay, when things are being cut left, right and center, um, that we have more and more of a responsibility to communicate our science. So I think science communication to your peers, which has always been, which has always happened, and to the public will only increase in its importance. And you're going to need to have people who are able to do this effectively and clearly if we're going to continue protecting our science budgets so that we can continue to actually do the work. If you don't do it, if you drop out of actually trying to convince people that it's actually useful, then people are going to think that the money is going to be better spent on hospitals, on your rail travel, you know, on old people, on, on any number of other things, rather than some esoteric science that they don't understand. But I do believe that all students or postdocs, all PIs, I think, need some level of training to be able to understand that this is actually critical and important to do.